Hello, welcome to John's Author Diary for the week ending October the 6th, 2019. I've had a mixed bag of a week. Started off well enough. I wrote a short story called The Princess and the Tailor. Now, I've done this for an anthology which is inspired by Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. So I was invited to do a story for this. We'll see whether it gets accepted in the end because... I gave the original story a reread after a few years, and to be honest, it sucks. Really didn't like the story, so I took the theme of a person transforming into a monster and went with that. So unless you're reading it on a really thematic level, you might think, well, what's this got to do with Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde? Because it is basically telling the story of the way my protagonist's parents meet from the Ravenglass Chronicles. So the story itself, I really enjoyed writing it. It's quick and snappy, it's got short scenes, and I think it actually adds quite a bit to the main story. So I've got that outlined, written, and redrafted, sent off, so that's with the anthology guy now. And so I went back to work on book 12, so I basically did a second draft up to where I've written, and then carried on once I got to the end. So I'm probably about three quarters of the way through now, and I just really want to get it done, really want to get it finished. My Friday was a complete write-off because on Thursday, my guide dog Digit, he got attacked by a Staffordshire Bull Terrier. And so I had to deal with the fallout of that. And so this has meant, after it happened, going to the vets and calling the police and guide dogs and dog warden and giving statements and going back to the vets. So yeah, the attack happened and then it seems that there's basically a lot of admin to do in relation to that i'm now out of a guide dog for two weeks digit he's been a trooper he's feeling sorry for himself a bit because he's got one of those stupid cone things on his head luckily the injuries weren't too serious he's had four staples done in his leg he's got quite a deep gash but luckily it hasn't damaged the muscle or anything like that he's gone down to the muscle but he hasn't tore it or anything so that was lucky because that could have been a more serious injury so that's derailed my plans for the weekend, for example, because my sister-in-law has just had a new baby and I was planning to go to Leeds to go and visit her and I can't really do that with a dog with a cone around his head. I can't leave him here, so my wife and son are going to go and see them. But I will use that time to catch up on writing this book 12. I have to admit I'm feeling really frustrated at the moment with all these things that are getting in the way of my writing. My wife keeps telling me, you know, don't worry about it. It's just, it's life. It's, um, you know, you've not got a boss breathing down your neck. So, you know, just take it on the chin. And it's like, I actually find that there is more pressure in a way because it is all on me. And, you know, I've got myself breathing down my neck, if that makes sense. So I've got the pressure on me. I really want to get the stuff done and, and out because the longer stuff sits there gathering dust, that's leaving money on the table. And there's a lot of things like momentum and, you know, there's been a month now between my Ravenglass releases and I still haven't finished my first draft. So I really want to just get this book out and into the world. I'm really excited about this uh, next series that I want to work on, but obviously I've got to clear the backlog. Can't start a new project until I have done with the Ravenglass Chronicle series. So I did manage to do a few bitty things. It seems that I can do things like go through corrections on non-fiction. That's fine. I can do that when there's stuff going on, but The fiction stuff, I need to get into a flow. I need to get a decent chunk of headspace in order to do it. And I can't do that when, you know, I've got police coming around and people mending my kitchen and stuff. So at least that's done. At least the kitchen is finally done. Well, I'll say finally, it needs decorating now. You know, we've had the worktops and tiling done and all that, but the walls have been plastered. It's just bare plaster and the ceiling needs sorting. So I think we're going to do that. At the end of October, so more disruption on the way. (laughs) So I did have a bit of a revelation this week, and this probably isn't really much of a big thing to anyone apart from me, but I've realised that I've been getting hung up a bit because I do my planning by months and quarters. I've been getting hung up on, you know, when I get disrupted months with because of the way the school holidays fall and things like that. And I looked at my calendar and realised, okay, there's only two months in a year which aren't disrupted. So July and November are basically three months. So I need to shift my mindset on that from the October half term. I'm going to start planning in half terms. 
So I'm going to do it in line with the school holidays and think about doing a project in that time frame. Because, you know, the way I've been doing these Ravenglass books and getting up at 5 a.m. and things like that, it's made me realise how much I can actually do. And so I think that I could quite comfortably write an 80,000 word novel over six weeks and that includes first and second drafting and line edits as well so that's how I'm going to start looking at things I'm going to start looking at them as these half term chunks and to have as my kind of baseline four novels per year now with the half terms there are six so there is a potential to do six but I want to give myself that leeway that buffer because hey who knows maybe there'll be another couple of weeks where there's disruption and things like that so I'm just looking forward to next week anyway. Hopefully things will be a bit simpler, a bit easier. I mean, Digit's still going to be running around with a cone on his head for the next couple of weeks. And on Tuesday, I need to take him back to the vets. But Tuesday is the day my wife has off work anyway. So that won't be too disruptive. In terms of reading, I've nearly finished book two in the Fits and the Fool series by Robin Hobb. I'm 95% through the audiobook, so I will probably have that finished by the time you listen to this i've not been wowed by the book it's okay it feels like there's been a lot of pages where they're just building to book three and there's just stuff thrown in to fill up space like there's a scene where they're in a camp and a bear turns up and there's a big standoff and it just seemed a bit like a pointless scene it didn't lead to anything it was just like oh no there's a bear oh it's fine and when a book's so long when it's a 33 hour audio book you think, you know what, you could have cut that out, saved 15 minutes. But as with all Robin Hobb stuff, I think now that I've invested so much, I may as well put the series out of its misery. So hopefully the next book will go up in quality. It's called Assassin's Fate, so I think it'll probably just bring the whole arc to an end. Finally, please do check out my Patreon page. It's patreon.com slash John Cronshaw author. I have been posting more chapters of the new version of Wizards of the Wasteland. We're getting right to the end now. Plus, I've been adding short stories and articles and loads of fun stuff. So I think at the moment there's probably about four or five posts a week. And you can get that for a dollar a month, which is nothing. That's pennies. So I'm not seeing any traction on that at the moment. Anyway, I did say I would keep the Patreon going until December. But it's not doing anything at the moment. I think I've got about $3 worth of support. So... It's definitely not worth it if I get to December and it's still at that. So if you do want to support my Patreon, if you do want to support me and this podcast, please visit patreon.com slash John Cronshaw author. So until next time, cheerio. Mm-hmm.